The famous monumental Edifice de Rome Moderne has solicited prize from three generations of architects, and we trust that a few words on its author will not be out of place. Introduced to Persier by a mutual friend, he studied under him from 1816 to 1819, and it was then that his fine taste and perseverance was kindled in the direction of the classic, finally bearing fruit during his first visit to Rome in 1821-1825. He had meanwhile worked for a short time in 1820 on the Odeon Theatre, but the encouragement given to his first few drawings of the buildings of Rome, together with the praise of his old master Persier, decided him to devote his life to the measuring and drawing of these latter. He chose the Renaissance in preference to the classic buildings because the former, as he explains in his preface, were destined à satisfaire à des usages ou à des besoins plus conformes à ceux de notre époque, while the latter were of too difficult a study to utilize or adapt to his requirements, although they were to him of intense interest. Having thus chosen this path, he persevered, and no building of any architectural interest of the 15th to the 17th century escaped his pencil. It is noteworthy that his careful measurements were extended to even the less important details, and it will be found on perusing this book that only engravers of repute were selected for the transference of his careful drawings to the copper plates. The book, therefore, contains faithful reproductions of his work, and this, covering as it does many buildings since destroyed, is of increasing value. He also had access to the libraries of the Vatican, of Florence and of Siena, and was thus able to check up and reconstruct in many cases from the architect's original drawings, such as, for instance, the doors of the Cancelleria and San Lorenzo, which he found amongst Bramante's manuscript. Meanwhile, his work was gaining the applause of his contemporaries, and nearly 500 copies were subscribed to, amongst which it is interesting to note the French government took over 100, this in spite of the pirated edition by the master pirate Avanzo of Liège. When one considers the monumental character of the book and the mass of material in it, it is pleasant to know that Le Tarouille had at least this proof of the esteem his contemporaries had over him, and sad to learn that he did not live to see his drawings completely out of the press. The work was originally issued in periodical parts and occupied him 35 years. 35 years of careful, unremitting industry, with the knowledge that every part he so painstakingly prepared and published was being immediately conveyed to Brussels, and there easily transferred to lithographic stones to be republished and distributed over Europe in a very short time at a much lower price. In addition to the Edifice de Rome Moderne, he was also preparing his Le Vatican et la Basilique de Saint-Pierre de Rome, which was far from being completed at his death. He had likewise intended to reproduce the work of Piranesi upon copper plates, in a uniform and smaller size than the originals, but was forced to give this up owing to the other works he had on hand and to his various appointments pressed on to him by the appreciative government and other authorities. One wonders where his drawings of Piranesi now are, as he had prepared a large number before realizing his inability to complete the work. <laughs>